Hi, my name is Alexander Hodge from the Emmy-nominated show Insecure on HBO. Yeah, I was a fan before before I had the audition, which is a problem because there's like a sort of a taboo, or not a taboo, but like a, a curse over things that you really want. You know, I never thought that there was going to be a, a role for an Asian guy on Insecure just because I didn't think it was that world, you know. And so when that when it came up, you know, it was, it was just one of those things that was an opportunity that was too good to, to miss. I told you stuff too. Like how you told me you auditioned for Be Too Gay? Oh, look who got her memory back. It is still very much a show about black women in LA and their experiences. But, you know, that story, and I think is is true to not treating any identity or community as a monolith or dehumanizing or minimizing these existences, that show and that sort of point of view can encompass an Asian identity, can encompass a non-black identity, because true to life, we are not just singular people who only mix with one kind of person. They don't fall to principle, you know, they, they'd rather keep it human, keep it real and show that. In TV, you're always learning as you go, especially about your character. You know, every time you get a new script, you learn something new. And so going into season four was really exciting, getting to learn about his, his family, about his background, to understand more about why he is the way he is. It was part of the journey, you know, I think we all have that in, in relationships, we're not perfect. We're all figuring it out as we go. We're always trying to do the right thing by our partner, but sometimes we miss the mark. If I get a strike, mm -hmm. you have to kiss me. I think it's a part of life. We see couples all the time from different backgrounds, you know, so it only makes sense to reflect what we see in real life, in, in our art, in our media. Whether or not we've been in interracial relationships ourselves, getting to see it on TV, getting a sort of window into it, understanding that it's not that you have to quell any part of your own culture or identity in order to be with somebody else, but it's really just a mutual sharing of it. Kind of, I don't know, breaks down any stigmas, if there are any, towards interracial dating. I didn't just disappear. I found out I'm bipolar. I think Kendrick plays it brilliantly. The great thing about the way it was written, the way it was delivered, it was a, a reveal of him that just above all else showed the intimacy between the two, you know? And, and, and it went from, you know, what could have been a big moment of shock to actually a, a kind of wonderful, sweet moment between the two because he was taking responsibility while also letting her in to something that is quite vulnerable for him. You know, I think that kind of representation in terms of mental health awareness, especially in like black community and communities of color, it's going to be one of those things that we're going to look back on in years to come. Even in showing Molly in, in, in therapy is kind of revolutionizing in 2020, believe it or not. It's one of those things where I'm really proud to be a part of. I'm really proud to, to stand upon, you know, as a person who lives with bipolar and has a therapist, I am really glad to see that on TV. I am 100% all for normalizing conversations around mental health. I think we're only going to get better as people once we can normalize talking about the things that we go through, creating support networks that can help us improve what we need to improve so that when we go through moments of crisis, like a pandemic, we have people that we can call upon to check in on us to make sure we're okay. And we can do that for other people as well. Because we're not basket cases, we can also support other people. We don't just receive support, we can also return. Did you see? Yeah, you did it. You did so great. Yeah. <laughs> I think I peed a little. It would, don't get me wrong, it was hell. We only had, I think, four days to get everything done, which is insane to shoot almost a whole episode in four days. We were on several locations, sunrise to sunset. You know, it was just such a brand new experience for all of us. I had an absolute blast. I'm really proud of what we were able to do and it was such an incredible experience I'll never forget. So we were doing Indian though. Yeah, I know you really like that place, but last time they're not, it was like, nah. I've actually had the time of my life working with Yvonne this past season. Most of my scenes are with her and we've become really good friends from it. And, you know, I'm really grateful to have had the time that I've had with her. I think it's made me a better actor and I might admit that it's made me a better person, but don't tell her I said that. You're my best friend. You take good care of me. 
I will murder for you, Prince. It's not that lowly. I hate working with Issa. She's too funny. It's honestly, it's just like every single take, she'll come out with a different line. That is the funniest thing in the world. She'll just start singing the most random songs. And I'm supposed to be trying to be serious. Strange for a show to get, you know, its first Emmy nominations four seasons in, right? But, um, but it's exciting. I'm going to put on my comfiest hoodie and sweats, get a pint of ice cream and maybe some cake. And I'm gonna kick my feet up and I'm gonna watch all the way through. I haven't thought about it. That's the first time I thought about it. And that's probably the most accurate depiction I could give you of what it's gonna look like. <laughs>